Good evening everyone, it is Crafty Zasky and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I am going to be doing my first video um, on a type of product test. I want to test um, two pretty commonly used um, items, well at least this one is. This is a jelly roll uh, gel pen in white. And this one, um, I actually hadn't heard of before I got them. Um, these are a Jane Davenport paint over pen in white. It also came in a couple of different colors, but I definitely use the white the most. Um, so I'm going to be testing these two over um, a variety of other products. Um, because white is often used to do um, highlights or other kind of details over other mediums and since I work in mixed media it is pretty important for me to find items that actually work really well um, that don't pick up on the other water-based mediums that I use because as far as I'm aware these are both um, water-based uh, yeah so I'm actually going to bring the camera down so you guys can see what's going on here I've got my two uh, categories for the Jelly Roll and the Jane Davenport. And here I have the different products um, that I've already laid down and prepared. Um, I tried to use, or I wanted to use black because clearly uh, it's opposite of white and I wanted to be able to get a clear visual for how these work over each of these products. I did not have a black and the Inca Gold or that, well, that's really a Deco Art, but it's a wax paint. Um, and I did not have a black uh, alcohol ink, so I just kind of picked the color and went with it. So I'm going to be doing just the paper, just so we can see um, if there's any kind of visible uh, results on just paper, which this isn't watercolor paper or anything fancy. It's just mixed media paper um, by the... Just this brand, I believe you can just get this at Walmart. I mean, and this is a pretty big book, so it's a good value. It's pretty sturdy paper. It'll it'll um, handle most things as long as you don't like saturate your paper. Okay, so I'm going to be doing just paper. I'm going to be doing color pencil, which is which I use the um, the Prisma color brand, so it's a more waxy, smoother. Um, lay down. Um, alcohol based marker, water based marker, wax paint. I put Inca Gold, but again, this is just the Deco Art. It's, you know, it's pretty much the same product. Um, acrylic paint, watercolor paint. Let me scoot that over. Um, graphite. I just used a really basic. <laughs> um, mechanical pencil. This isn't like any kind of special sketching, number two, anything like that. It's just, you know, basic, not very dark graphite. But it, you know, you should be able to apply it to just about any other graphite um, product. I'm assuming if I'm wrong, let me know. I would be happy to try these on a, on a fancier pencil um, that isn't just for writing, it's more for sketching. Um, this is gonna, this is black gesso. Um, it, I'm assuming it'll have a pretty similar lay down as acrylic paint because it's pretty much the same thing. Black gesso just has um, something to it. I don't know exactly what, but it has something to it that, you know, it's for priming. It's for being able to lay down other products um, and it's stick, it stay, it, it has more integrity. Um, here I've got a black gelato. That I've laid down, which has kind of a purple sheen. You probably can't see it on the camera. And then I've got this purple alcohol ink. I just used Ranger, you know, nothing, nothing specific or fancy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I think I'm just gonna, you know, compare one product at a time and just go down the list. And let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down the Jelly Roll. The good thing I like about Jelly Roll is that it is a finer point. It is so much easier to lay down. 
and um, you can lay down in layers. Um, you can make little speckles or dots if you need to. Um, you can't do that as easily with a bullet tip, but let's just see. I'm just going to kind of do some loopy loops, I guess, just to kind of test. Um, okay. And I'm going to do the same. I am working upside down because I don't have a place to put my camera on you know, like my side. So, I mean, if I do anything, write anything, it's going to look, you know, upside down, but it doesn't matter because it's all going to look the same. Okay. So I even have a hard time seeing, but the paint over pen, there we go. The paint over pen is easier to see on white than the jelly roll. You can't even really see anything. There it goes. I mean, I think that's more of an imprint from the ballpoint than the actual product. But here, there is no um, pressure point, I guess, really. So there's, there's our task, our control of sorts. Okay, so now I'm just going to move on. Oh, move on to the color pencil. There it goes. It's not too bad. Uh, what I've experienced with the jelly roll is that if I do it over, oh, that's one I should have done but didn't. Um, if I do it over my um, my ink sprays, my um, good laugh. What? Oops, wrong one. Uh, my delusions. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, it does, the jelly roll ink does tend to um, absorb whatever color this is because they're both water based. So it may take me um, a few layovers with the jelly roll. That's, um, it, it can be a desired effect. Um, but a lot of time it's not intentional. Um, so it's not, it doesn't always give the desired effect. So I'll just put that to the side. Um, of course, with something so waxy like colored pencil, that's not really a problem. Unless you're using um, like scribble sticks or um, anything that's supposed to be water soluble. Like... Um, scribble sticks or distress crayons or anything like that. I'm not exactly sure how these would work. That's probably another thing that I should have added. And I, I can always do another video like this if I compile a list of other things that I didn't include here. So um, I may do that in the future because I'm really interested to see. Okay, so I'm going to be done with that. And I'm going to do the same over here. Yeah. And sometimes it does take a few layers of the um, paint over pen to get a really opaque effect. It's kind of um, trans translucent. Yeah. So you can definitely see here the difference between the stroke width obviously thicker and the swirls aren't as defined but it is more opaque and I only had to go over it like twice it still looks kind of gray it's not completely white but um you know sometimes that can be what's desired if you don't want something to stand out too much this is the jelly roll I had a hard time um getting defined lines even though they were thinner and easier to um, to find the actual shape that I was making. And then the dots are more opaque because um, they're more in a concentrated area. Okay, so we'll just move on to the alcohol marker. Let me just... Oh, that's nice. I think a lot of the difference between um, a marker and a color pencil or crayon would be that there, you know, with, with markers, there might be stroke marks, like 
like what you can see with the water based, but they're not, they're on the same level as the paper. You're not um, competing with product that's on the surface, if that makes sense. So I'll just color a few of these in. Yeah, this is really nice. I'd say as far as um, stroke marks go between the two, they're pretty, um, pretty even. Because the paint over pens are, they're almost exactly like actual paint, just thinner and more, uh, more water based than like an acrylic. It does lay on top of the surface of the paper, but it also kind of absorbs too. That's why we were able to see it on just the paper as opposed to the jelly roll. Um, so I'll go ahead and move on. I'm going to try to make those small as well. Yeah, that's almost absorbing right into. Yeah, this is picking up part of the. Yeah, there we go. See, it's kind of, the camera's not wanting to cooperate very much. Common problem. Um, it's kind of picking up a little bit of the alcohol ink pigment. It's not saturated. It's not affecting the, oh, well, I guess it is a little bit. I'll just, yeah. Um, so I guess that's something to look out for if you're, if you use, um, alcohol based markers and if it does this to the alcohol based I can only assume it's also going to do it to the water based um, all this says is paint like ink for dark and light paper it's archival permanent opaque acid free so um, yeah I I think it's pretty safe to assume that this is water based but usually water based things um, don't interact a whole terrible lot with uh, alcohol base in my still naive experience. <laughs> I have a lot to learn, a lot to experiment with. So this time we had a bit opposite. This is the jelly roll. You can see kind of the stroke marks. It's not so bad. Very opaque. And it was very easy to um, color in. There was no competing with the product. This one I had to do a couple of layers and it's still a little bit translucent and the paint over pen picked up some of the pigment from the alcohol ink. Not enough to be a problem really um, but enough to be noticed if I were to move on to another project and want to use this again. Okay so let's see how the water based goes. Yep. That, let me get let me get in here really good so you can see what's going on. As soon as I lay this down, it takes up the pigment of the water-based marker. You can hardly see that, right? Yeah. I was kind of expecting the same thing to happen. Look at that comparison between the alcohol ink and the water-based ink marker. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There it goes. Yeah, big difference, right? Okay, so we're going to go over here. And I'll just stay zoomed in and kind of do the same thing just in case. Well, pretty much the same thing's happening. You see that immediate recession of the quality of pigment. This would be good if you're wanting to do um, some negative space shading. Um, I saw a video by the YouTuber um, Draw with Gaza and he did uh, a piece on black paper with whiteout and he, so he had to do all highlights um, and this would be good if you wanted a variety of um, shading to give dimension. So um, you could definitely work with that and then, you know, build, build that opaqueness, if that's a word. 
there's always, always a benefit to something not turning out how you want it to or how you expected. That's why things like this are great for practicing on your own if you really want to get to learn your products and how they interact with each other, especially if you do mixed media. Sometimes things just happen on accident and that is so much fun. Other times you're working on something, you're loving it, something happens unexpected and you know, you quit for the day or you start over or you just, you know, chuck your journal across the floor. Okay, this is going to be a situation where I'm competing with the product that's on the surface of the paper. This is a wax product, um, a wax paint. You don't, this is a product that you don't really have to use a primer on unless you're wanting to have a, a specific kind of background showing through, like black. Um, the latest um, piece, that cork board that I just finished, had a black gesso background, and I used these. I didn't use this color, but I used these particular products, the wax paints, um, to go over it because I wanted something a little more dramatic and not so bright and happy. I wanted, you know, some of that, but something a little more mystical. So that wasn't so bad. It's pretty opaque. You can see in that, that first one, I had to kind of, I had to learn how to um, get that pigment on there. Okay, let's move on to the paint pen side. Oh yeah. That is very easy. It's very smooth. Um, it may take longer for a product like this to dry because it doesn't just absorb. Let me just go ahead and... No, not so much. Of course, if I immediately touch it, it's going to come up. But Yeah, I mean, a tiny bit. Those are pretty even. Um, I did pick up some of that green pigment. But that's okay because it doesn't really affect. <laughs> I keep saying that and then I prove myself wrong, but that's okay. I'm sure these, yeah, it will survive. It will make it come back. I am confident. Um, again, a big difference here, um, aside from quality of um, opaque pigment, pigment uh, would be, you know, depending on your desire or your, the size of what you're working on, you may want something thinner like the jelly roll with a ballpoint to get into fine details um, for highlights or shading or, you know, um, texturizing, anything else like that. Oops. Okay, let's move on to the acrylic paint, which is just the, the Simply Walmart brand. You know, something like that in the tube I definitely um, recommend it is a little pricier than like the apple barrel or the the folk I think it's called but it's a really big tube I'll go ahead and show you it's a really big tube and this was like five dollars this I've had this forever and I've only used that much. A little bit of this brand goes a long way. Uh, it has a more gel-like quality than um, other smaller tube brands, which I really like. And it's just as easy to use as well. It seems to be having a similar um, result as the uh, alcohol ink marker alcohol marker, I should say. I don't know why I picked triangles and just kind of went with it. I, I planned on doing different designs and stuff, but I guess this is just easy to analyze and easy to draw. Uh, so that actually, of course, is not picking up any pigment at all from that. And see, that, that green is already gone. I wasn't worried. Um, it's not picking up any pigment at all from the acrylic paint. Um, pretty much once once acrylic paint is down and dry, there's not a whole lot that can reactivate it. You can try with water, but you know, once it's down, it's pretty much done for. Which can be a blessing or a curse. Okay, so 
that actually looks really nice. You can't really see any um, strokes, any marks, lines, or anything um, from the doodling. Pretty much the same here. You don't get the crisp lines as usual as with the jelly roll, but it's nice. That's really nice. Um, I will say that this is slightly more opaque, the jelly roll, than the paint over pen. Okay, now we're going to move on to watercolor. Let's do circles. Oh. I did expect this to... I guess it makes sense. It's another water-based product, obviously. So, um, other water-based are going to activate the pigment in that. Do some dots. Okay, so, not terribly opaque. I was trying to do dots and not swirls, and you can see the the strokes. The dots are fine, they are great. That's pretty much the same. There's not a lot of difference. Um, you can see some of the stroke directional stroke or whatever you want to call it. I don't even remember what I was calling it earlier, but you know what I mean. Those are pretty similar in, opa in op opacity. Is that a thing? Okay, I don't have a lot of faith. Like I said, this is probably going to, you know, be a little bit different on an actual sketching pencil, like a number two or um, any of the other darker um, graphite sketching pencils. Oops. Wrong product. That's interesting. the jelly roll. There's the Jane Davenport. Again, not a huge difference. Those are pretty much the same. So those are going to yield uh, pretty much the same results if you if you work in graphite. Okay, let's go to the black gesso. So I'm really not expecting any difference between the acrylic and the black gesso. So stick with circles. I went back to triangles. Let's make those into circles. Happy accidents, right? Those are very nice opaque circles, just like I was expecting. This actually seems to be doing its job in making the jelly roll more opaque. Let's zoom out just a little. Or maybe it just looks that way because there's more pigment involved with making circles. I don't know. Um, it is a little bit of a smoother lay down than the acrylic. It seems to be easier to fill this in more with less product. Good if you're on a budget because you definitely want to make your products last as long as they can. Oh, yes. Again, really smooth lay down with um, minimal pigment use. It is seeming to be a little translucent. Just a little. It's pretty white. It would get the job done. It would, it would do highlight very well. 
and then there's a jelly roll. Very opaque and bright. Very nice. Now the gelato is going to be another competing pigment. Yeah, I don't even think I'm going to be able to lay down anything with the jelly roll. Let me move that back over here. Um, yeah, I can get that in there. Come on, focus. You can do it. There it goes. Well, I had it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm definitely not getting any traction with the with the ball in the pen because of the waxy nature of the of the gelato. It's like a crayon. It's like a really buttery, smooth, water soluble crayon. Um, it, I think it was causing some product buildup on the ball point. Yeah, just a little bit. So that's definitely not working at all, except for dots. But that's just because it's easier to force a tiny bit of pigment onto this than, you know, use the, the ball to lay down that pigment. It's just creating tracks, basically, in the, in the gelato. So let's move over here. Pretty smooth lay down, not very opaque. Maybe I can make a kind of bubble and see the difference in layering here. Yeah, you can. So that that darker part is from the first layer of lay down, and then the the lighter parts here are, of course, like what highlighting would be um, if you're wanting different levels of highlight or shading. So um, definitely recommend a paint over pen <laughs> for gelato. No argument there at all. There's like zero competition. And now finally we're going to move on to just the regular old alcohol ink by Ranger. And I'll start with Jelly Roll. Let's do, let me just outline these, the shapes here. That wasn't so bad. You can definitely tell that there's lines there. It does kind of absorb. That's kind of expected, especially after the um, alcohol ink marker test. Yeah, I mean. That's pretty nice. I wouldn't not recommend. It might be something that I would prefer, but if this is what you have, if this is all you have, this is definitely going to work. I definitely know what it's like to have to just use what you've got. That kind of reminds me of a, a geode. Or not a geode, but a... What is it called? Agate. Yeah, that definitely did the job. It's very easy. To see, oh, it looks even better on camera. Honestly, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> oh, it also reminds me of a red or purple cabbage. Anyway, we'll move on. 
to the paint over pen side. And I'll just do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of go around and observe how it behaves. Definitely not the same. Yeah, that's uh of course I don't the bullet tip, I don't have as much room to do as many rings, but there's that. It is definitely not this. So kind of the opposite here, you know, between the graphite and the alcohol ink. So definitely recommend jelly roll over paint over pen. Um, if you're working on small spaces on alcohol ink, if you're doing um, details and, and whatnot. So, I mean, overall, they're pretty equal in quality. Um, it just all depends on what exactly you are wanting out of your products. Um, if you're wanting something really specific and you have a, a, a complete goal in mind, definitely research um, what you're using, um, how you're going to be using it, and maybe what other artists have, have done. Um, Jazza on YouTube, Draw with Jazza, is a really good place to start. He does a lot of different arts. He does a lot of different challenges. He stretches his own limits. Um, and I've learned, I've learned uh, quite a bit from him, really. Uh, so um, definitely check him out. Stay tuned on my channel because I definitely plan on doing more stuff like this. I really, really um, want to do this more often. I have enjoyed recording, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Have a good evening.